right, it is the Illini Basketball Podcast, episode number 90, which, as, as has been stated many times at the beginning of these podcasts, we are approaching 100. It's closer than you think, uh, 10 episodes away. So it's going to happen during the regular season, which, unless the team just stops working forever, then it wouldn't, <laughs> be, that, wouldn't be that way. But, uh, okay. You know, Illinois coming off another win, a game where you were very concerned, and it looked like you had a right to be concerned, especially with the way that it started. But uh, I was the one texting, this team sucks. Is that we, me? We kind of did switch a little okay. bit, I guess. Okay. So, you know, All I right. feel like you were a little bit more negative in the last game than I was. But okay. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, Illinois wins. 10-point win. Doesn't look, uh, doesn't look like it, you know, it was that hard if you just look at the score. But um, – yeah, it was it was not a pretty game. Uh, Nebraska came out on fire. Uh, that was your worry was Nebraska was going to finally start shooting well, and uh, well, they start four for four from three um, to get the game started. So I don't know if it was so much Illinois. I, a lot of people are saying Illinois came out flat. Um, I just think Nebraska came out really hot. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, player of the game as we always start this. Our pogs. I'm going to go with Trent Frazier. I don't know how you don't go with Trent Frazier, but uh, 38 minutes, 29 points, 29 points. Uh, I think one off of his career high, which was 30, obviously. Um, two rebounds, five assists, four steals, and only one turnover. <clears throat> um, playing the point for 38 minutes, one turnover. I will take that all day, every day. Um, we uh, talked a lot about who's going to be the guy when Io isn't here as he wasn't, and we don't need to look any further. That guy's going to be Trent Frazier, it looks like. Um, he had an amazing pass to DeMonte. <clears throat> DeMonte's only points was at three. Uh, Trent was literally underneath the basket behind seven guys and threw a bullet to DeMonte. DeMonte hit the three that he needed to hit, and then he hit that dagger three with like a minute left, um, kind of sealed the game for him. And not only was his offense – really good uh his defense against verge was absolutely insane uh verge is a guy that can get to the basket at will and i mean trent frazier was in his back pocket all day um so good for him um I, it's nice to see you know frazier having these games and being that guy i feel like he's very underrated in the national light um so when he comes together like this uh you know, there's some there's some jumper, you know, twos that I wouldn't like him taking, I guess. Um, but I felt like Illinois was doing that with everybody. I feel feel like Plummer passed up some good threes to do that. Um, Grandison seemed to be taking some, but I guess that's just the way Nebraska runs at you and comes at you at the three point line that you get forced into those shots a little bit more. But uh, yeah, Trent, phenomenal game. Uh, who who'd you go with? Well, I received a text uh, that somebody said Omar Payne better be the player of the game, and I went along with it because good. I, I and I agree. I I agree that Omar Payne was a definitive player in the final stretch of the game. So he deserves I, I really something because he hasn't that. he hasn't done anything this season. I think Trent is going to get it more. He's going to get it eventually again, I'm sure. Sure. Omar Payne's probably never going to get it. Uh, this is, <laughs> you know, this is the one, one game where thing. he did something. So yeah. I'm going to give him the props. He did yeah. something. Yeah, he would definitely be my uh, consolation prize uh, guy. Um, Underwood said after the game, uh, I literally kept the best player in the country on the bench last four minutes because Omar Payne was that good. So. Well, I mean, Kofi was uh, pretty much dead. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. So same starting five. I think we're going to see this starting five the rest of the year. I don't care if Curbelo comes back. I don't think he's going to work his way into the starting five here. Um, he should probably come off the bench anyways because of the time he's had off. Um, shout out to Curbelo, 0 for 1 in this game. Uh, took a three that came rolling to him, didn't even come close. Pretty, I think Nebraska fans started chanting airball at him. So, uh, you know, drop that 16% three point percentage down a little bit. But uh, Kofi, yeah, uh, struggle, I guess you could call it for a Kofi game. Um, I mean, 16 points, 13 rebounds. You'd probably be pretty happy with anybody doing that. Um, played 30 minutes, ended up getting four fouls. That's when Omar Payne came in and kind of, kind of 
jump sparked the team. Um, Omar Omar had that huge block against McGowan's coming in, and then came back down and threw one down um, on an alley oop from Trent. So, uh, but Kofi, yeah, uh, one steal, one assist, one block, had two turnovers. Uh, it looked like he was just exhausted. Um, when you talked about Nebraska being number nine tempo, there's no doubt that Nebraska is top 10 tempo. Um, every time they get the ball, uh, either from a rebound or a steal, I mean, they're, they're running and, and that's what they want to do. And they try to wear you out. And, you know, sometimes it works like it did against Illinois. Sometimes you get beat by 30 or whatever that Michigan beat them by. So, um, I, I feel like Kofi's, you know, exhaustion kind of played into Nebraska having runs too um, on defense. Uh, you pointed out that, you know, he he was going after Verge and trying to block shots instead of worrying about getting a rebound. Uh, I, I I think part of that is Verge is so quick and he had to come help Trent a little bit. Was he overhelping? Probably. I mean, Kofi's been doing that like all season. He has, yeah. And 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 that's you know, and that's the thing is what we wanted was when Kofi was out was for Payne to play like Payne played this game, right? I mean, he had uh four blocks in this game. Payne had four blocks, and you know, that's that's kind of the the give and take that we wanted with Kofi and Omar is that when Kofi is out, Omar can come in and be a defensive, you know, just dominant player. And it was good to see him bust out and be able to do that. Um, I feel like some of the exhaustion led to Kofi's free throw shooting. Um, he was 0 for 5 from the line, uh, almost airballed one at one time. Um, but I, I think that, uh, you know, he just – that's Nebraska. You have to run, and I'm hoping that this kind of gives Omar the the jump that, hey, you know, he can do this and, uh, you know, come in. And not only did, uh, you know, Payne play really well um, on the defensive end, he made his free throws, which a 43% free throw shooter made four of four um, I saw I saw at one time, I don't know if this was the final number, but uh, Omar Payne was plus 14 in the plus minus category. So um, it's kind of what you need. I, I just, you know, Kofi gets hammered all the time. He doesn't get anything called, uh, you know, for him. He got kind of some BS calls, I felt, um, on the defensive end too. Um, but Well, I mean – this specific game, he didn't get any calls, but yeah, he gets a lot of calls. Yeah, I mean, he he does to an extent. That's one thing that does bother me a little bit. He gets a lot of calls, but like, if you read Illinois Twitter during the games, you would think that he never gets any calls. Yeah, calls, I see. But that. it's also very hard to officiate a game when you have a seven foot, two hundred eighty, ninety pound center. <laughs> Right. Against college players, and most of the, he's never going to face anybody that's his size yeah. for the most part. And so, I, I saw somebody say that if Kofi played the way other people play him, he would foul out in five minutes. And uh, Aunt Wright, true, who, which is who different, you're, but... you know, big fan of, agreed with that and said that he, he he wouldn't last five minutes if if that's how he played. So, um, I mean, that's just you got to take it as it is. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm not saying that he should play hard. You know more aggressive or whatever um it, it's just it, it it gets annoying when he gets hammered on on one you know when he pinned that one in between the rim and the backboard he just got hammered on and then they call some touch foul over the back that it didn't look like he was on him so do you think that refs are ever thinking about um the other players fouling out whenever they're calling these games with Kofi there, I I don't know. I mean, because if they actually called fouls that were legitimate they fouls, foul they would. Yeah. Everybody would foul out. I agree. I agree. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it's ever going to be better. If it's ever, you know, if there's a right or wrong answer there. I mean, like you said, he is a 290 pound, seven foot guy. So, so he's going to get played differently, and it is what it is. Um, well, there's but, too many different crews, and most of the crews suck, and they don't really know what they're doing. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's going to be a disaster game to game. Welcome to Big Ten refing, right? Or Welcome refing to college basketball. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. disaster. Uh, yeah, let's uh, – who else? Uh, Grandison, um, 12 points, three rebounds, four assists. I believe they were all to Kofi because, you know, he is the best entry pass guy that Illinois has. Uh, one block, three turnovers. I think he led the team in turnovers, which, you know, Grandison has always been that guy kind of iffy with the ball, you know, Sometimes he's like, yeah, don't do that, but he does it anyways. Um, he played better than last game. It wasn't a great game. Uh, I feel like he's really quick on the trigger now. Um, he's shooting a lot, uh, two of six from three, four or 12 from the field. Um, <clears throat> but overall, I'm not going to complain about his game. I mean, Grandison's going to put up double digits for you. And, uh, you know, some shots you're going to like, some shots you're not. Uh, DeMonte. Three points, but the the three hit was huge. Like I said before, four rebounds and assists to steal. Um, he only had one turnover. So the two guys that are handling the ball for Illinois had two combined turnovers. Illinois as a team only had nine. So that, that's a step in the right direction with the way Illinois usually turns over the ball. So if they keep that cleaned up and the guys, the main ball handlers, you know, can keep, keep, being, you know, one or two turnovers a game, that's definitely going to be a lot better for Illinois. Uh, I thought his defense against McGowan's was really good, especially giving up size against him. You know, uh, DeMonte kind of always draws that card. Uh, <clears throat> McGowan's was 6 of 15, and I think three of those were dunks. Uh, one was a putback dunk. One was a we're down eight flex at the end of the game dunk. Um and I, I can't remember the other one. So McGowan's did have 19 points, but I thought over, overall DeMonte did a pretty good job on him. Uh, he's a big-time talent, and he's wasting it at Nebraska. So. <laughs> yeah. But to be uh, fair, I mean, he's a one-and-done NBA guy, right, you would think? I think so, yeah. I, th- I think he's too athletic and too good to to stay there. Um, That's why you don't go play with a sibling. It's just you're playing at Nebraska who might – Win what three games in the Big Ten, maybe? Yeah, and, yeah, and I think I think Nebraska will shock a good team before the end of the year. There's a um, reason why I thought they would be better this season. Like they're yeah. on paper, they're pretty good. I mean, Verge is a good player. Um, I think, like I said, McGowan's is a, an extreme talent. Yeah, and uh, you just worry a little bit about the interior play, Walker and Latman. Yeah, I, I Lat thought Man Walker shows did, up against did Illinois. An, a pretty good job against Kofi. I mean, defensively. Um, and he had, had some good better plays. than last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I think Nebraska is going to, going to sneak some games in uh, where they beat somebody. Um, but we'll you see. Wanna, I mean, you could circle that game right now. I think we all know what game that is, but you know, something to think about. Uh, <clears throat> Indiana on January 17th. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Plummer, uh, another struggle from three point, uh, one of five. He had a few uh, drives and baskets, which I like to see. I I don't mind Plummer going in uh, to the lane. I'd rather him do that than pass up on a three and take a 17 foot jump shot. But, you know, I teams are are figuring I mean, figuring out if they didn't know already, which they probably should have known uh, Plummer can shoot. Uh, they're closing out on him harder. They're keeping him, you know, contained more. Uh, I wish that Brad would maybe run some more plays for Plummer to try to get him open. But Illinois struggles to set screens, so I don't know how you get him open. I think I texted you during the game, and I said right now is when they need to run a play for Plummer. And Plummer just got the ball and shot it in the guy's face and made it. That was the only three he made, so – um, he did, he does hit timely threes, which is good. Uh, he had one that was in and out that kind of would have separated Illinois a little bit more. But I feel like his defense is getting a lot better. Um, he's really stepping into, you know, playing hard defense, which Illinois needs. Um, so uh, the bench, uh, Omar Payne, we already talked about, great game. Uh Nod to him. I'm glad to see him doing well. I hope 2022 is his year, like you said. Um, but uh, Hawkins, good game. Good game, Hawkins. 13 minutes, eight rebounds. Uh, he had 
Uh, I think three offensive rebounds to himself. Um, but that I think that was kind of the the big play. I think that was right after Kofi went out. Um, he crashed the boards, missed it. I think he missed again. He might have missed again. I don't know. Uh, ended up making it. Uh, that was a huge play. I think the game was, you know, tied at that point. And that's kind of then when Omar, I think they came down, Omar Payne stuffed them and then came back with the alley-oop. And uh, Illinois kind of went on their little run. Um, I, I told you this during the game. I feel like I feel like he gets called for some terrible fouls, like kind of just touchy, doesn't not really – they don't seem like fouls, but I guess they are. But I feel like Hawkins just kind of gets the short end of the stick on there. Um, Podzimski, uh, first, first freshman off the bench again. Uh, felt like he played well. I don't think he got a minute in the second half, but he played five minutes in the first half. Uh, played good defense. Uh, that's kind of what he did. I, he didn't take any shots, uh, along with Goody, who didn't take any shots. Um, but he played well uh, for the six minutes. He got in, uh, had two rebounds, had a nice uh, block on defense as a guy beat him. Um, so this is this is kind of what you want from the freshmen. I mean, they don't have to be – Offensive scoring threats, but come in, put in solid minutes, get the guys, uh, you know, some time off. Uh, one thing that I did mention about Kofi that I wanted to mention is this is the first game where Brad didn't take him out before the under 16. Uh, and I don't know if that had, you know, a play in him being gassed for the rest of the game. I wouldn't think it would, but um, that's kind of been Brad's MO. You take him out at like 16 10 or 16 30. They're getting murdered. So, give him a little rest. Yeah. I guess they needed him. I get that. But, um, yeah, uh, it's a win. Um, so you, you move on. Uh, it was a, the first half was a big game of runs. Uh, you know, Nebraska started off just out of control. Uh, 16 4 run to start. Illinois goes on a 27 7 run in the middle. And then Nebraska closes out with an 11 0 run. Uh, and Illinois had a five minute scoring drought during that time. So they just got to they got to control the runs better, um, not let teams do this. If this is anybody but Nebraska, I mean, if this is Michigan State or even Michigan, um, you're probably more worried as a 64 start than you are against Nebraska. Um, but you know they they had they did what they had to do on the road against a team that I think is better than their record. Um, I, I told you I was scared of them um, to start. So it's kind of hard to not be better than your record when you're zero and six. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Um, Underwood after the game, uh, he did say, "When I think back at this game, I'm going to think about Coleman Hawkins and then maybe the coming out party of Omar Payne. Couldn't be happier for the young man and the way he stayed with it." So, uh, shout out to both of them. Um, I think everybody kind of saw that uh, they were kind of the the catalyst to, to get Illinois over the hump and, and get this win. Uh, interesting numbers I saw, you know, like 9,000 people posted on Twitter about Illinois' record the past three years or, or so. Um, Illinois has now won six straight Big Ten road games, 11 of its last 12. Um, they're 34 and 11 in Big Ten play the last three seasons, which is second best um, with Wisconsin having 28 wins. So they're six wins better than uh, the second best team, the three seasons before that, that would be, I think Brad Underwood's first two years and then Gross's last year. Is that correct? Um, it doesn't matter. Anyways, um, sure. <laughs> Illinois was 19 and 37 um, there. So not great. Um, they're 29 and five over their last 34 uh, big 10 games. They're 19 and one over the last 20 Big Ten games with a margin of victory uh, of 12.05 points. So, Seems Illinois good. rolling, right? That 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 is something that can be said. Yes. Did you want to mention that uh, Curbelo thing? Sorry. I did want to mention that. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, mean, I, I talked about him being over one already. So, um, but yeah, he almost got teed up on the bench. I believe somebody, I believe 
Brent Barron, is that his name for WCIA? Sure, um, why not? Said the ref went over to him and asked him if he knew his role during a timeout. So, um, but yeah, is that illegal? Is it illegal to stick your hand up like that? It's got to I mean, be yeah. right. Why else would yeah. you be mad, right? <laughs> God, I mean, what a joke. These officials stink. <laughs> They just, I, you just, you gotta shut up, you know, if you're the official there. Yeah. Acting like they're bigger than they are, which, you know, nobody's here to see you. Uh, That's right. Ref show. And Tomanaga is an absolute loser. I didn't know that, I didn't know that they let 11 year olds play college basketball. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Yeah. That 11 year old can shoot. He can shoot, which uh, I knew. And I mentioned that going into the game, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Still, he just, did. So, I, I, maybe you should play soccer because that's a lot of emotion on the basketball court. <laughs> yeah. Makes a shot and then acts like you just won the Super Bowl as Michigan State did last <laughs> Michigan night. Michigan State after oh, wow. after the dude travels. I mean, how do they not call that travel? Did you see that? I didn't see that, but uh, oh, yeah. it's, it's it's out there somewhere. The video of uh, oh, what's that freshman's name? Christy. The, Christy, uh, right before he made the pass, I mean, just blatant travel. Picks up his dribble, slides his pivot foot, and then he goes to make the pass. And before he passes, he picks up his pivot foot. So he actually traveled twice in one play. Um, but yeah, Michigan State, good win over. Uh, <laughs> how <did> they play <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota at home. Good work. Let's see. I'm watching it right now. Here we go. Oh, it's so blatant. That was a travel. <laughs> it was. Tweet says uh, Max Christie drags his pivot foot before passing it. Should have been a travel. Yeah. And they picked it up before he made the pass, too. So, whatever. Oh, Anyways, a win, a, 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 a win, a win, a win, right? Illinois 5 0. is a loser. Tomonaga is a loser. Illinois 5 0. It's a lot better than 4 1. So, uh, especially with the onslaught of teams they got coming up. So, uh, yep, they on to Michigan. The much easier part of their schedule with a five and a record, which first time since national championship game team. Well, what do you yeah. call that? Second place team. <laughs> runner up. Runner up team. National <laughs> championship runner up team. Before we get to Michigan, let's just comment on whatever the hell this is. Underwood will dominate the Big Ten as long as he's here. Best overall coach in college basketball. I mean, you can't you can't say that he hasn't dominated right now, right? He's the best overall coach in college basketball. We don't count about thirty or forty other guys. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Congrats. I mean, Brad. he he can't you can't say. That I'm not he hasn't arguing that. I'm the arguing the the best overall coach thing. That's a little much. But. Yeah. They have dominated the Big Ten, but I know you. You know, and the Big Ten has been good when he's dominating it. But uh, I mean, I mean, right now everybody loves him. Last year after Loyal, everybody hated him. So you know, it, that's I've always coach, thought he's a good coach. coach hard. But I've always coaching's thought he's hard. a good coach. But you know, there's certain things that you can, you know, I feel like we've been pretty consistent in what we criticize about his coaching. Yeah, sure. You know the uh, substitutions, the anti Allen Iverson practices, you know, <laughs> um, basing too much off of that, the way that he kind of alienates freshmen in certain games. Like you would not even remember that Melinda is on the team. If you watch the last. Yeah. What is up with that? Yeah. I don't know. I, just, I, don't, I mean, it, Podge it was, is overtaken all. I guess he's playing harder in practice. Yeah. <laughs> Hawkins must be putting up like triple doubles in practice with the way that Brad talks about him. Yeah. I wish BVV would have some better practices so I could see him back out there. I wish BVV would switch to the football team and play defensive end. <laughs> so, and a happy birthday to the yeah. Illinois head football coach. Yeah. Brett, Brett Bielema. Bielema. I've happy never said birthday. anything about him. He's a good guy. Good guy. Yeah. Uh, Two year turnaround from the bottom to owning the Big Ten. Yeah. I mean, the problem is that. They've only been in the tournament once, and one of them was not their fault. They would have been in it. Right. Um, and they haven't really – I mean, outside of a few games, how many games do you look at where you're like, that is so impressive, you know? Great. Michigan last year, 
it's just I don't think that like from a national standpoint or from a uh, a Big Ten media standpoint that they're gonna look at Illinois that way. They're gonna look at oh Iowa lost Luca Garza they're still quote unquote good and Johnny Davis is the greatest player ever and oh Purdue has a lotto pick who isn't even that good right now man <laughs> so cool and they have the next Yao Ming who isn't even good except for when he elbows people I mean what are we doing. You know? he won't be able to elbow Kofi in the face. Yeah, maybe he will. Who knows? I mean, probably he's like eight feet tall. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you right. can't, you can't, you cannot say that Brad hasn't turned the program around. I Obviously. agree with that. Obviously, I mean, anyone I who anyone who denies that is an idiot. Yes. Anyone who denies that didn't watch what the hell they were under John Gross <sighs> or Brad's first two seasons. Well, I mean, that was a cleanup process. First you know? season, first two seasons. When were they 12 and whatever? Was that his first season or his second season? That was his second, wasn't it? We're about to find out here, folks. Live, on air. If I knew how to spell Brad Underwood, that would be... Brad Underwear. Jesus. They will. 14, 14 and 18 year one. Yep. 12 and 21 year two. And year two was Io's first year. For yeah, freshman year. And they showed flashes that year though. Twelve and twenty one. They did. They State. just didn't close games, right? Didn't I mean that beat, was... was that the season that they beat Michigan State, I believe it was. Yeah. At home. And then the Gonzaga game in Maui. If yeah. Io was anything of what he became, they would have won that game. Yeah. The, that was that was the transition year into Io becoming a finisher. So boom. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. they beat lost... Michigan. They've lost 11 out of their last uh, 34 Big Ten games. 11 out of their last – no, I did that wrong. Who? 11 out of the last 45 Big Ten games. Woo-hoo, quick math. But, uh, yeah, nailed it. And this 46, I don't know. Yeah, that's almost like going 34 and 11, like I said earlier. Well, I was just doing it a different <laughs> way, you know? <laughs> I was letting you know some people like the one way, some people facts. like the other. I got you. Yeah. I was doing uh, both. There I got you go. You. All right, uh, <laughs> Illinois, Michigan, tomorrow night, eight o'clock, FS1, January fourteenth, Friday. Michigan seven and six or one and two. The Big Ten. They're coming off two losses. They haven't played since January fourth, uh, and they're acting like they haven't played for two months. If you read <laughs> what people are saying, sure. Um, you know, this is a this is an interesting game because it's a game that was much more circled going into the season, considering what people thought Michigan would be. They haven't yeah. been that, but yeah. um, you know, still talent. Yeah, I mean, the, the when you know the season started, I think people thought this was going to be a battle of two teams that are playing to win the Big Ten, and Michigan does not seem to be that team. Right now, I don't know if they'll turn it around. Um, Michigan spokesperson said uh, today that uh, Michigan has every intention of flying out this afternoon. So weird so, quote. So until we're there, uh, I don't know if anybody's really going to think this game is going on. Uh, Juwan did say that uh, we'll see which guys will be available. He said a couple players have returned to practice, while some other players are still out on quarantine are coming out of quarantine. Um, and then he said that they haven't been able to do five on five practices all week. So I don't know who's available. I don't know. I, all we know is that they're going to have at least seven scholarship players. So it certainly seems like this game will happen. If you look at Michigan's Twitter. Feed. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't doubt it's going to happen. I, you know, I am not on the, the, Michigan's ducking Illinois bandwagon. And I ha- would hate to see Twitter, tomorrow night if Illinois loses this game because Illinois fans are dumb on Twitter for saying that. I'm serious. Like, I think that's the stupidest thing you can do before a game is sit there and tell them, oh, yeah, you're ducking us. Oh, yeah, let's let's give them fire. You know, let's do that, Illinois fans. That's a good idea. And then if Illinois does lose, y'all better go be finding a hole to hide in. So – I, and I just, clearly, Michigan players look at what Illinois fans say. If you listen to Dickinson, right? So yeah, Dickinson's all over the twitters. 
It talks a lot for someone I who's. Uh, I don't know if they do. I don't care if they do. I think that it's dumb, though. Okay. Can I think something's dumb? Yes. Can I, I call something dumb. stupid. There you go. Can I be Woo! you for one one episode? <laughs> I think that the entire Michigan program is dumb. How about that? There you go. Uh, but I think, um, you know, this this is a this game is not that important for Illinois. Like they could lose and you, whatever you move on, go to Purdue. I, I think you it's it, Purdue. no. I think it's important because they do have Purdue and Michigan State coming up. They're going to Maryland be on the road. Too. Yeah. That, that's that's why it's important. It has nothing to do with beating Michigan. Who cares? Um, but yeah, but then they they have Purdue on Monday at 11 a.m. and you know how Illinois plays at 11 a.m. Not very good. Then they got to go to Maryland and then they got Michigan State coming to town. So they're going to beat Michigan State. Yeah, they should. Michigan State has not impressed me. The fact that they're ten in the nation it boggles my mind. But well, is you know. Yeah, brand. I did see uh, John Rothstein posted his, you know, January, February is or whatever. And somebody's like, the guy hasn't won in two, won a championship in two decades. I mean, that's easy to say, but let's think about this. First of all, it's really hard to win. And second it of all, is. they have they oh, have made a lot of runs. I agree. It was just a, it was it was very good. Well, I'm sure someone comments on every single. Word. I love I love the January February Izzo. I'm a I'm an Izzo fan. So, uh, Izzo is like kind of like uh, reminds me of Saban a little bit. You know the way that he operates, the way that he looks. Yeah, uh, just I not the that. championships to back it up. Right. You know they right. won in 2000, <laughs> but then like they made it to the final four yeah, two decades. <laughs> I wasn't joking. <laughs> yeah, but. There's more to March Madness than winning at all. I mean, come True. on. He's True. made it to like five Final Fours. Sorry, yeah. eight Final Fours. All right. Brad That's Underwood right. should be renamed for March. And by the way, <laughs> Michigan State is 21st on Ken Bob, so they're not that impressive. I mean, 21st yeah. is – they're not top 20 in either offensive or defensive efficiency. And if you're worried about the pace of Nebraska, the tempo that they play with, Good news, Michigan's 271st. <laughs> yeah, so. I agree. Yeah, I could figure that. Um, but yeah, back to Michigan. Um, well, you sorry. know, they got a little Izzo, Izzo ness. <laughs> barely lost to Seton Hall. They lost Seton Hall by two. They got beat up pretty good by Arizona, which that's a, a different from Illinois, just in the sense that a lot of people didn't know how good Arizona actually was when they played Michigan. But right. then when they played Illinois, everyone was like, okay, this is a legit team. Like when they played Michigan, they were coming off of, a, I believe, an overtime win over Wichita State, Arizona was. So I'm assuming Michigan didn't think Arizona was as good as they are. So right. uh, the UNC game was an absolute embarrassment. They got destroyed by them. Uh, they lost to Minnesota by 10. That's puzzling. They lost to UCF by 14. Lost to Rutgers by 8. I mean, yeah. Pretty disastrous uh, considering. Other teams in the Big Ten have lost more than what Michigan lost. All right. Uh, and yeah, they're and, not as bad. As and that's the thing is when you, when you look at their wins, I mean, they haven't beat anybody. I mean, Buffalo, Prairie A&M, UNLV, Tarleton, Texans, whatever San that Diego is. State's a pretty good one. San Diego State, yes. Um, they lost – or they beat Nebraska at Nebraska by 35, and then they beat Southern Utah. So – uh, their only road win is that win at Nebraska. That that Nebraska thing is one of those things where it's like <clears throat> Nebraska. If they don't have it, it's going to look like that. Yeah, and, well, I mean, uh, the, the Michigan scored 106 points that game. Yeah, which is well, nuts. Hopefully, they don't do that uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I already we'll see. I already yelled at Ellen on my Twitter, so you can skip. That. We don't have to go back after them. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I do wonder how Michigan approaches the defensive side here because last season they had Wagner and Livers and, you know, those guys were healthier, uh, better defensively than what they have now, I think. Um, Livers didn't play against Illinois last year. I thought he played like a few minutes and then got hurt. Uh, maybe he did. Maybe you're right. Let's, you, you go ahead and talk about the defense. I'll check this yeah. out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't – I mean – 
I look at Michigan and wonder who's going to score for them. I, like I said, I know they scored 106 points, but, you know, Eli Brooks probably going to get shut down. Um, I Dickinson can't score on Kofi. So their offense is what is 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 what I think is going to be the big thing is who's going to get points for them. Um, Houston, Diabate, um, Devontae Jones, pretty good three point shooter, shooting forty six percent for the for the year. But uh, it, on paper, this is a game that Illinois should win by a lot. But and and we don't even know who's available for Michigan. I mean. Do they have all their starters? Because the the thing is, <clears throat> their starters <laughs> um, were the ones that were okay uh, the last game they played. Right? Um, they had had two or three bench guys that were on COVID protocol. So um, yeah, I don't know. Well, Livers played thirty one minutes against Illinois, but I'm pretty sure he got hurt in that game and kept playing. He had seven points. So the further Michigan gets away from John Beeline, the more the culture disappears. Not a great coach. I you, <laughs> Ethan loves Jawan Howard. So I don't think there's any uh, debating that Beeline is a <laughs> much better coach than Jawan yeah. Howard has been. But uh, I think a lot of this has to do with number one. I think they've struggled with the difference of like their lineup is a lot different this year than last year, which I think most uh, schools go through. But this has been obviously harder for them and uh do you think Juwan is turning more towards uh Penny Hardaway as in can get a lot of recruits but can't coach them to do no. really good things? They're in different tiers. I mean Penny is terrible. Let's just be honest. Okay. Penny is a terrible coach. And Juwan is but Penny's also playing team. with all his players. Juwan is just now doing it with all his players, right? I mean yeah, Liver, I, Livers was still around during the Beeline era, right? Uh, I think so. I mean, Livers doesn't even count. I mean, he was never healthy. Yeah. Great player, just never healthy. Sure. Uh, I don't know. I think that they've struggled with the fact that last year their point guard was a transfer that really, really worked out, and this year it's not been the case. Uh, yeah. Mike Smith was very good there last year, mm-hmm. uh, and now it's not that way. I mean, I don't know. I – I'm not going to compare him to Penny, but I agree that Beeline was obviously better. The Beeline going to the Cavs was one of the dumbest moves I've ever seen. <laughs> Just so stupid. And uh, I wouldn't use the word culture either because I think that's something that Michigan has. I would just say they're not playing well. And uh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't think anybody said how uh, Juwan was a great coach, solid coach, good coach. I mean, <laughs> you've been saying that. Dude, I only use the word great for a like year and a half. <laughs> okay, great, great coaches. Here we go. Here I, we go. I will, I will say that you have reverted on that lately, though. Uh, so uh, Nate Oates, that means anything. Nate Oates, great coach. Dana Altman, great coach. Mark, <laughs> Mark Few, great coach. Uh, uh, you know, there's other names you throw in there. Izzo, great coach. Scott Drew. Scott right. Drew, great coach. Yeah, absolutely. You could he could be coach of the year. I don't care. That's a team that's had more changes than uh, Michigan, and they're still undefeated. Or they were undefeated. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, they did. I yeah, changed him. Now, Mark yeah, Adams. Okay. Mark Adams is Texas Tech. My God. Uh, he's a better coach for that program than Beard was. Anyway, um, yeah. you know, Juwan Howard, uh, good coach. Great is not a word I would use. Uh, good is one that I would use. Now, I wonder if an NBA team ever comes calling. Does he go to the NBA? Uh, man, I don't think so. What if they're not – like, what if they miss the tournament this year? If they start sucking, I don't know. I, I mean, they have started sucking. I don't – I don't – I mean, he wants to be Michigan, right? Like, Yeah, but he's going to be – he's going to be a name for a lot of – he'd be a name for a lot of NBA because he was an assistant for a long time in the NBA. He, yeah. No, I'm not saying that. Reminds me of a bit of Harbaugh. Just, a bit of Harbaugh even though Harbaugh coached in the NFL before going to Michigan. You know, now he's going to the Bears, right? Well, zero percent chance. And if it does happen, <laughs> good for them, but I'm not so sure about that. Uh, all right, there's a bit of a disaster going on here, uh, with Washington State and uh, Stanford to keep an eye on in college basketball. They're Stanford. delaying. They're delaying the game because of issues with COVID testing. So, I'm pretty sure oh. the players are just standing there. I don't even know. Oh. 
So that's good. Good, good thing we got everything under control. Who, who has COVID? Because, I mean, Stanford, Stanford, right? Stanford doesn't even have fans. They can't get COVID. Yeah. There, if you turn it, if, if I turn it on uh, Pac 12 Network, see if that's what it's on. Pac 12 Network. Jesus. Okay. Uh, it's not even what it's on, but something about two announcers talking the whole time. Huh. So interesting. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, Anyways, back to the basics, right? Ken Palm, where Michigan is not very good number wise. 46th on defense, which is surprising. 24th on offense. So Illinois better in both. Illinois is 10th on offense and 26th on defense. Uh, key stat Michigan offensive rebounding 98th in the country. Uh, Michigan does get. You know they do. They don't turn the ball over as much as Illinois, but they also don't turn other teams over. Okay. They're three hundred thirty seventh in steal percentage defensively, so Illinois so might have less than terrible. ten turnovers. Pretty much yeah. that's is what it looks like. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean Illinois' defense is very similar in that regard. Turnover percentage, they're both not in the top three hundred. So yeah. Something to think about. I don't know what their lineup's going to be, uh, especially since, like you said, we don't know who's yeah, available. No idea. Well, I'm assuming. I think you can lock it in the Dickinson. will be there, right? He'll be there. Yeah, I don't know. Have they posted pictures of them flying into Illinois? I mean, you got anything on there on the twitters? They posted what uniforms they were wearing and how they were back at it this week or something. Okay. So. So yeah. nothing of importance. No, not at all. Great. All right, predictions. Here we go. Predictions. Right. Sorry, my dog's decided to act up all of a sudden. Uh, you do yours, I'll do. Seventy-four, sixty-nine, Illinois victory. I think it's close. I think Illinois gets the job done. I think it's closer than it probably should be. Um, I think Michigan's going to throw their fastball, especially considering what Michigan. What happened to Michigan last year against Illinois? Now, could this be a reverse effect where Illinois beat Michigan in Michigan without Io, and now Michigan beats Illinois at Illinois without players? I mean, we can see that, but I will trust this team to win. I don't see it happening. I think Illinois uh, has been looking for this game. I think they had it circled on their calendars. Um, They want to beat Michigan. Um, Illinois has turned this into a rivalry game, I think. Uh, you, you ask Michigan fans, and it's not a rivalry game, but it is what it is. Um, I think Illinois is going to start shooting better. They're going to be back home. They're going to be on hoops they like. Uh, I think they're going to score, and they're going to score a bunch. Uh, 85-70, Illinois win. I will see. Uh, I think spread's going to be. I think it's out. Eight. That would be my guess, eight. I'm going to go with seven and a half. <laughs> That seems to be good much by you. I know. I just, you know I did that on purpose, right? Steve, no. Steve Steve says that they're going to dominate from the start. I, I'm i down. I agree. I think it's going to be – I think Illinois is going to win this handily and uh, embarrass the crap out of Michigan. I will be at the game. If you do see me there, say hi. Um, I'll give you a business card or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eight and a half is what this is. In half, okay. Well, so we're both right. Well, I was more. Right. Hammer the line eye, folks. That's my. Don't answer. hammer the line eye. All right. <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, I guess Sunday or something like that. For yeah, Sunday in between football games. I Purdue. guess. Right. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, preview the Purdue thing, and we're also supposed to do the countdown to March Madness midseason show on Sunday at some point. So we so will... you can listen to Ethan talk more than I do Absolutely. on like this podcast. <laughs> it's, a, it's a flip and reverse thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's how it works around here. Um, but we'll we'll talk about the Illini on a national stage in front of a national audience. So, Absolutely. All right. We'll see you Sunday. Uh, Illinois better win or this podcast may never happen again. All right, Absolutely. Buddy.